The Gregorian calendar is the most widely used civil calendar in the world. It is named after Pope Gregory XIII, who introduced it in October 1582. The calendar spaces leap years to make the average year 365.2425 days long, approximating the 365.2422 day tropical year that is determined by the Earth's revolution around the Sun. The rule for leap years is as follows. Every year that is exactly divisible by 4 is a leap year, except for years that are exactly divisible by 100, but these centurial years are leap years if they are exactly divisible by 400. For example, the years 1700, 1800, and 1900 are not leap years, but the year 2000 is. The calendar was developed as a correction to the Julian calendar, shortening the average year by 0.0075 days to stop the drift of the calendar with respect to the equinoxes. To deal with the 10 days difference between calendar and reality that this drift had already reached, the date was advanced so that 4 October 1582 was followed by 15 October 1582. There was no discontinuity in the cycle of weekdays or of the Anno Domini calendar era. The reform also altered the lunar cycle used by the Church to calculate the date for Easter computus, restoring it to the time of the year as originally celebrated by the early Church. The reform was adopted initially by the Catholic countries of Europe and their overseas possessions. Over the next three centuries, the Protestant and Eastern Orthodox countries also moved to what they called the improved calendar, with Greece being the last European country to adopt the calendar in 1923. To unambiguously specify a date during the transition period, dual dating is sometimes used to specify both old style and new style dates. Due to globalization in the 20th century, the calendar has also been adopted by most non-Western countries for civil purposes. The calendar era carries the alternative secular name of Common Era. Topic. Description The Gregorian calendar is a solar calendar with 12 months of 28 to 31 days each. A regular Gregorian year consists of 365 days, but in certain years known as leap years, a leap day is added to February. Gregorian years are identified by consecutive year numbers. A calendar date is fully specified by the year numbered according to a calendar era, in this case Anno Domini or Common Era, the month identified by name or number, and the day of the month numbered sequentially starting from 1. Although the calendar year currently runs from 1 January to 31 December, at previous times year numbers were based on a different starting point within the calendar see the beginning of the year section below. In the Julian calendar, a leap year occurred every four years, and the leap day was inserted by doubling 24 February. The Gregorian reform omitted a leap day in three of every 400 years and left the leap day unchanged. However, it has become customary in the modern period to number the days sequentially with no gaps, and 29 February is typically considered as the leap day. Before the 1969 revision of the Roman calendar, the Roman Catholic Church delayed February feasts after the 23rd by one day in leap years. Masses celebrated according to the previous calendar still reflect this delay. Calendar cycles repeat completely every 400 years, which equals 146,097 days. Of these 400 years, 303 are regular years of 365 days and 97 are leap years of 366 days. A mean calendar year is 365 and 97 400 days equals 365.2425 days, or 365 days, 5 hours, 49 minutes and 12 seconds. Topic. Gregorian reform The Gregorian calendar was a reform of the Julian calendar. It was instituted in 1582 by Pope Gregory XIII, after whom the calendar was named, by papal bull Inter Gravissimas dated 24 February 1582. The motivation for the adjustment was to bring the date for the celebration of Easter to the time of year in which it was celebrated when it was introduced by the early Church. The error in the Julian calendar its assumption that there are exactly 365.25 days in a year had led to the date of the equinox according to the calendar drifting from the observed reality, and thus an error had been introduced into the calculation of the date of Easter. 
Although a recommendation of the First Council of Nicaea in 325 specified that all Christians should celebrate Easter on the same day, it took almost five centuries before virtually all Christians achieved that objective by adopting the rules of the Church of Alexandria see Easter for the issues which arose. Topic. Background Because the date of Easter was tied to the spring equinox, the Roman Catholic Church considered the seasonal drift in the date of Easter undesirable. The Church of Alexandria celebrated Easter on the Sunday after the 14th day of the moon computed using the metonic cycle that falls on or after the vernal equinox, which they placed on 21 March. However, the Church of Rome still regarded 25 March Lady day as the equinox until 342, and used a different cycle to compute the day of the moon. In the Alexandrian system, since the 14th day of the Easter moon could fall at earliest on 21 March its first day could fall no earlier than 8 March and no later than 5 April. This meant that Easter varied between of March and 25 April. In Rome, Easter was not allowed to fall later than 21 April, that being the day of the Perilia or birthday of Rome and a pagan festival. The first day of the Easter moon could fall no earlier than 5 March and no later than 2 April. Easter was the Sunday after the fifteenth day of this moon, whose fourteenth day was allowed to precede the equinox. Where the two systems produced different dates there was generally a compromise so that both churches were able to celebrate on the same day. By the 10th century all churches except some on the eastern border of the Byzantine Empire had adopted the Alexandrian Easter, which still placed the vernal equinox on 21 March, although Bede had already noted its drift in 725. It had drifted even further by the 16th century, worse, the reckoned moon that was used to compute Easter was fixed to the Julian year by a 19-year cycle. That approximation built up an error of one day every 310 years, so by the 16th century the lunar calendar was out of phase with the real moon by four days. European scholars had been well aware of the calendar drift since the early medieval period. Bede, writing in the 8th century, showed that the accumulated error in his day was more than three days. Roger Bacon in c. 1200 estimated the error at seven or eight days. Dante, writing c. 1300, was aware of the need of a calendar reform. The first attempt to go forward with such a reform was undertaken by Pope Sixtus IV, who in 1475 invited Riggio Montanus to the Vatican for this purpose. However, the project was interrupted by the death of Riggio Montanus shortly after his arrival in Rome. The increase of astronomical knowledge and the precision of observations towards the end of the 15th century made the question more pressing. Numerous publications over the following decades called for a calendar reform, among them two papers sent to the Vatican by the University of Salamanca in 1515 and 1578. But the project was not taken up again until the 1540s, and implemented only under Pope Gregory XIII R. 1572 to 1585. Topic. Preparation In 1545, the Council of Trent authorized Pope Paul III to reform the calendar, requiring that the date of the vernal equinox be restored to that which it held at the time of the First Council of Nicaea in 325 and that an alteration to the calendar be designed to prevent future drift. This would allow for a more consistent and accurate scheduling of the Feast of Easter. In 1577, a compendium was sent to expert mathematicians outside the Reform Commission for comments. Some of these experts, including Giambattista Benedetti and Giuseppe Mileto, believed Easter should be computed from the true motions of the sun and moon, rather than using a tabular method, but these recommendations were not adopted. The reform adopted was a modification of a proposal made by the Calabrian doctor Aloysius Lilius or Lilio. Lilius's proposal included reducing the number of leap years in four centuries from 100 to 97, by making three out of four centurial years common instead of leap years. He also produced an original and practical scheme for adjusting the epochs of the moon when calculating the annual date of Easter, solving a long-standing obstacle to calendar reform. Ancient tables provided the sun's mean longitude. Christopher Clavius, the architect of the Gregorian calendar, noted that the tables agreed neither on the time when the sun passed through the vernal equinox nor on the length of the mean tropical year. Tycho Brahe also noticed discrepancies. 
The Gregorian leap year rule, 97 leap years in 400 years, was put forward by Petrus Patatus of Verona in 1560. He noted that it is consistent with the tropical year of the Alfonsini tables and with the mean tropical year of Copernicus de Revolutionibus and Reinhold Prutenic tables. The three mean tropical years in Babylonian sexagesimals as the excess over 365 days the way they would have been extracted from the tables of mean longitude were 14, 33, 9, 57 Alphonsine, 14, 33, 11, 12 Copernicus and 14, 33, 9, 24 Reinhold. All values are the same to two places 1433 and this is also the mean length of the Gregorian year. Thus Patata's solution would have commended itself to the astronomers. Lilius's proposals had two components. Firstly, he proposed a correction to the length of the year. The mean tropical year is 365.24219 days long, a commonly used value, in Lilius's time, from the Alfonsini tables, is 365.24254463 days. As the average length of a Julian year is 365.25 days, the Julian year is almost 11 minutes longer than the mean tropical year. The discrepancy results in a drift of about 3 days every 400 years. Lilius's proposal resulted in an average year of 365.2425 days see accuracy. At the time of Gregory's reform there had already been a drift of 10 days since the Council of Nicaea, resulting in the vernal equinox falling on 10 or of March instead of the ecclesiastically fixed date of 21 March, and if unreformed it would drift further. Lilius proposed that the 10-day drift should be corrected by deleting the Julian leap day on each of its 10 occurrences over a period of 40 years, thereby providing for a gradual return of the equinox to 21 March. Lilius's work was expanded upon by Christopher Clavius in a closely argued, 800-page volume. He would later defend his and Lilius's work against detractors. Clavius's opinion was that the correction should take place in one move, and it was this advice which prevailed with Gregory. The second component consisted of an approximation which would provide an accurate yet simple, rule-based calendar. Lilius's formula was a 10-day correction to revert the drift since the Council of Nicaea, and the imposition of a leap day in only 97 years in 400 rather than in one year in four. The proposed rule was that years divisible by 100 would be leap years only if they were divisible by 400 as well. The 19-year cycle used for the lunar calendar was also to be corrected by one day every 300 or 400 years, eight times in 2,500 years, along with corrections for the years that are no longer leap years, i.e., 1700, 1800, 1900, 2100, etc. In fact, a new method for computing the date of Easter was introduced. When the new calendar was put in use, the error accumulated in the 13 centuries since the Council of Nicaea was corrected by a deletion of 10 days. The Julian calendar day Thursday 4 October 1582 was followed by the first day of the Gregorian calendar, Friday 15 October 1582 the cycle of weekdays was not affected. Topic. Adoption Although Gregory's reform was enacted in the most solemn of forms available to the Church, the bull had no authority beyond the Catholic Church and the Papal States. The changes that he was proposing were changes to the civil calendar, over which he had no authority. They required adoption by the civil authorities in each country to have legal effect. The bull inter gravissimas became the law of the Catholic Church in 1582, but it was not recognized by Protestant churches, Eastern Orthodox churches, Oriental Orthodox churches, and a few others. Consequently, the days on which Easter and related holidays were celebrated by different Christian churches again diverged. A month after having decreed the reform, the Pope with a brief of 3 April 1582 granted to Antonio Lilio, the brother of Luigi Lilio, the exclusive right to publish the calendar for a period of ten years. The Lunario Novo Seconda la Nuova Reforma printed by Vincenzo Accolti, one of the first calendars printed in Rome after the reform, notes at the bottom that it was signed with papal authorization and by Lilio con licentia degli superiori et permissu ant oni Lillage. The papal brief was later revoked, on 20 September 1582, because Antonio Lilio proved unable to keep up with the demand for copies. On 29 September 1582, Philip II of Spain decreed the change from the Julian to the Gregorian calendar. 
This affected much of Roman Catholic Europe, as Philip was at the time ruler over Spain and Portugal as well as much of Italy. In these territories, as well as in the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth ruled by Anna Jogelin and in the Papal States, the new calendar was implemented on the date specified by the Bull, with Julian Thursday 4 October 1582, being followed by Gregorian Friday 15 October 1582. The Spanish and Portuguese colonies followed somewhat later de facto because of delay in communication. Many Protestant countries initially objected to adopting a Catholic innovation, some Protestants feared the new calendar was part of a plot to return them to the Catholic fold. For example, the British could not bring themselves to adopt the Catholic system explicitly. The annex to their calendar, New Style Act 1750, established a computation for the date of Easter that achieved the same result as Gregory's rules without actually referring to him. Britain and the British Empire, including the eastern part of what is now the United States, adopted the Gregorian calendar in 1752. Sweden followed in 1753. Prior to 1917, Turkey used the lunar Islamic calendar with the Hajira era for general purposes and the Julian calendar for fiscal purposes. The start of the fiscal year was eventually fixed at 1 March and the year number was roughly equivalent to the Hajira year see Rumi calendar. As the solar year is longer than the lunar year this originally entailed the use of escape years every so often when the number of the fiscal year would jump. From 1 March 1917 the fiscal year became Gregorian, rather than Julian. On 1 January 1926 the use of the Gregorian calendar was extended to include use for general purposes and the number of the year became the same as in most other countries. <laughs> <laughs> Difference between Gregorian and Julian calendar dates Since the introduction of the Gregorian calendar, the difference between Gregorian and Julian calendar dates has increased by three days every four centuries all date ranges are inclusive. This section always places the intercalary day on 29 February even though it was always obtained by doubling 24 February the bisextum twice sixth or bisextile day until the late Middle Ages. The Gregorian calendar is proleptic before 1582 assumed to exist before 1582. The following equation gives the number of days actually, dates that the Gregorian calendar is ahead of the Julian calendar, called the secular difference between the two calendars. A negative difference means the Julian calendar is ahead of the Gregorian calendar. d equals y 100 minus y 400 minus 2 Display style d equals left l floor y 100 right r floor left l floor y 400 right r floor minus 2, where d display style d is the secular difference and y display style y is the year using astronomical year numbering that is use year BC minus 1 for BC years x. Display style left L floor X right R floor means that if the result of the division is not an integer, it is rounded down to the nearest integer. Thus, during the 1900s, 1,900 four hundredths. Topic four. While during the minus five hundredths, minus five hundred four hundredths. Minus two. The general rule, in years which are leap years in the Julian calendar but not the Gregorian, is as follows Up to 28 February in the calendar you are converting from add one day less or subtract one day more than the calculated value. Remember to give February the appropriate number of days for the calendar you are converting into. When you are subtracting days to move from Julian to Gregorian be careful, when calculating the Gregorian equivalent of 29 February Julian, to remember that 29 February is discounted. Thus if the calculated value is minus 4 the Gregorian equivalent of this date is 24 February. <laughs> Beginning of the year The year used in dates during the Roman Republic and the Roman Empire was the consular year, which began on the day when consuls first entered office, probably the 1st of May before 222 BC, the 15th of March from 222 BC and the 1st of January from 153 BC. 
The Julian calendar, which began in 45 BC, continued to use 1 January as the first day of the new year. Even though the year used for dates changed, the civil year always displayed its months in the order January to December from the Roman Republican period until the present. During the Middle Ages, under the influence of the Catholic Church, many Western European countries moved the start of the year to one of several important Christian festivals. The 25th of December, supposed Nativity of Jesus, the 25th of March, Annunciation, or Easter, France. While the Byzantine Empire began its year on the 1st of September and Russia did so on the 1st of March until 1492 when the new year was moved to the 1st of September. In common usage, the 1st of January was regarded as New Year's Day and celebrated as such, but from the 12th century until 1751 the legal year in England began on the 25th of March, Lady Day. So, for example, the parliamentary record lists the execution of Charles I on 30 January as occurring in 1648 as the year did not end until 24 March, although later histories adjust the start of the year to 1 January and record the execution as occurring in 1649. Most Western European countries changed the start of the year to 1 January before they adopted the Gregorian calendar. For example, Scotland changed the start of the Scottish New Year to 1 January in 1600 this means that 1599 was a short year. England, Ireland and the British colonies changed the start of the year to 1 January in 1752 so 1751 was a short year with only 282 days though in England the start of the tax year remained at 25 March OS, the 5th of April NS until 1800, when it moved to 6 April. Later in 1752 in September the Gregorian calendar was introduced throughout Britain and the British colonies see the section adoption. These two reforms were implemented by the Calendar New Style Act 1750. In some countries, an official decree or law specified that the start of the year should be 1 January. For such countries a specific year when a 1 January year became the norm can be identified. In other countries the customs varied, and the start of the year moved back and forth as fashion and influence from other countries dictated various customs. Neither the papal bull nor its attached canons explicitly fix such a date, though it is implied by two tables of saints' days, one labeled 1582 which ends on 31 December, and another for any full year that begins on 1 January. It also specifies its epact relative to the 1st of January, in contrast with the Julian calendar, which specified it relative to the 22nd of March. The old date was derived from the Greek system, the earlier Supputatio Romana specified it relative to the 1st of January. <laughs> Dual dating During the period between 1582, when the first countries adopted the Gregorian calendar, and 1923, when the last European country adopted it, it was often necessary to indicate the date of some event in both the Julian calendar and in the Gregorian calendar, for example, 1021 February 1750 51, where the dual year accounts for some countries already beginning their numbered year on 1 January while others were still using some other date. Even before 1582, the year sometimes had to be double dated because of the different beginnings of the year in various countries. Woolley, writing in his biography of John D. 1527-1608, notes that immediately after 1582 English letter writers customarily used two dates on their letters, 1 OS and 1 NS. Topic: <laughs> Old style and new style dates. Old style OS and new style NS are sometimes added to dates to identify which calendar reference system is used for the date given. In Britain and its colonies, where the Calendar Act of 1750 altered the start of the year, and also aligned the British calendar with the Gregorian calendar, there is some confusion as to what these terms mean. They can indicate that the start of the Julian year has been adjusted to start on 1 January NS even though contemporary documents use a different start of year OS, or to indicate that a date conforms to the Julian calendar OS, formerly in use in many countries, rather than the Gregorian calendar NS. <laughs> Proleptic Gregorian calendar Extending the Gregorian calendar backwards to dates preceding its official introduction produces a proleptic calendar, which should be used with some caution. 
For ordinary purposes, the dates of events occurring prior to 15 October 1582 are generally shown as they appeared in the Julian calendar, with the year starting on 1 January, and no conversion to their Gregorian equivalents. For example, the Battle of Agincourt is universally considered to have been fought on 25 October 1415 which is St. Crispin's Day. Usually, the mapping of new dates onto old dates with a start of year adjustment works well with little confusion for events that happened before the introduction of the Gregorian calendar. But for the period between the first introduction of the Gregorian calendar on 15 October 1582 and its introduction in Britain on 14 September 1752, there can be considerable confusion between events in continental Western Europe and in British domains in English language histories. Events in continental Western Europe are usually reported in English language histories as happening under the Gregorian calendar. For example, the Battle of Blenheim is always given as 13 August 1704. Confusion occurs when an event affects both. For example, William III of England set sail from the Netherlands on of November 1688 Gregorian calendar and arrived at Brixham in England on 5 November 1688 Julian calendar. Shakespeare and Cervantes seemingly died on exactly the same date, the 23rd of April 1616, but Cervantes predeceased Shakespeare by 10 days in real time as Spain used the Gregorian calendar, but Britain used the Julian calendar. This coincidence encouraged UNESCO to make the 23rd of April the World Book and Copyright Day. Astronomers avoid this ambiguity by the use of the Julian day number. For dates before the year 1, unlike the proleptic Gregorian calendar used in the International Standard ISO 8601, the traditional proleptic Gregorian calendar like the Julian calendar does not have a year 0 and instead uses the ordinal numbers 1, 2, both for years AD and BC. Thus the traditional timeline is 2 BC, 1 BC, AD 1, and AD 2. ISO 8601 uses astronomical year numbering which includes a year zero and negative numbers before it. Thus the ISO 8601 timeline is minus 0001, 0000, 0001, and 0002. Topic: <laughs> Months. The Gregorian calendar continued to employ the Julian months, which have Latinate names and irregular numbers of days. January 31 days, from Latin mensis ianuarius, month of Janus, the Roman god of gates, doorways, beginnings and endings. February 28 days in common and 29 in leap years, from Latin mensis februarius, month of the februa. The Roman festival of purgation and purification, cognate with fever, the Etruscan death god Februs purifier", and the pi word for sulfur March 31 days, from Latin mensis martius, month of Mars, the Roman war god April 30 days, from Latin mensis aprilis, of uncertain meaning but usually derived from some form of the verb apparier, to open, or the name of the goddess Aphrodite May 31 days, from Latin mensis maius, month of Maya, a Roman vegetation goddess whose name is cognate with Latin magnus. Great, an English major. June 30 days, from Latin mensis Ionius, month of Juno, the Roman goddess of marriage, childbirth, and rule. July 31 days, from Latin mensis Julius, month of Julius Caesar, the month of Caesar's birth, instituted in 44 BC as part of his calendrical reforms. August 31 days, from Latin mensis Augustus, month of Augustus. Instituted by Augustus in 8 BC in agreement with July and from the occurrence during the month of several important events during his rise to power September 30 days, from Latin mensis September, 7th month, from its position in the Roman calendar before 153 BC October 31 days, from Latin mensis October, 8th month, from its position in the Roman calendar before 153 BC November 30 days, from Latin mensis November, 9th month, from its position in the Roman calendar before 153 BC December 31 days, from Latin mensis December, 10th month, from its position in the Roman calendar before 153 Europeans sometimes attempt to remember the number of days in each month by memorizing some form of the traditional verse, 30 days hath September. 
It appears in Latin, Italian, and French, and belongs to a broad oral tradition but the earliest currently attested form of the poem is the English marginalia inserted into a calendar of Saints c. 1425. Variations appeared in Mother Goose and continue to be taught at schools. The unhelpfulness of such involved mnemonics has been parodied as, Thirty days hath September, but all the rest I can't remember." But it has also been called, "...probably the only 16th-century poem most ordinary citizens know by heart." A common nonverbal alternative is the knuckle mnemonic, considering the knuckles of one's hands as months with 31 days and the lower spaces between them as the months with fewer days. Using two hands, one may start from either pinky knuckle as January and count across, omitting the space between the index knuckles July and August. The same procedure can be done using the knuckles of a single hand, returning from the last July to the first August and continuing through. A similar mnemonic is to move up a piano keyboard in semitones from an F key, taking the white keys as the longer months and the black keys as the shorter ones. Topic. Weeks. In conjunction with the system of months there is a system of weeks. A physical or electronic calendar provides conversion from a given date to the weekday, and shows multiple dates for a given weekday and month. Calculating the day of the week is not very simple, because of the irregularities in the Gregorian system. When the Gregorian calendar was adopted by each country, the weekly cycle continued uninterrupted. For example, in the case of the few countries that adopted the reformed calendar on the date proposed by Gregory XIII for the calendar's adoption, Friday 15 October 1582, the preceding date was Thursday 4 October 1582 Julian calendar. Opinions vary about the numbering of the days of the week. ISO 8601, in common use worldwide, starts with Monday equals 1. Printed monthly calendar grids often list Mondays in the first left column of dates and Sundays in the last. In North America, the week typically begins on Sunday and ends on Saturday. Topic. Accuracy The Gregorian calendar improves the approximation made by the Julian calendar by skipping three Julian leap days in every 400 years, giving an average year of 365.2425 mean solar days long. This approximation has an error of about one day per 3,030 years with respect to the current value of the mean tropical year. However, because of the precession of the equinoxes, which is not constant, and the movement of the perihelion which affects the Earth's orbital speed the error with respect to the astronomical vernal equinox is variable, using the average interval between vernal equinoxes near 2000 of 365.24237 days implies an error closer to one day every 7,700 years. By any criterion, the Gregorian calendar is substantially more accurate than the one day in 128 years error of the Julian calendar average year 365.25 days. In the 19th century, Sir John Herschel proposed a modification to the Gregorian calendar with 969 leap days every 4,000 years, instead of 970 leap days that the Gregorian calendar would insert over the same period. This would reduce the average year to 365.24225 days. Herschel's proposal would make the year 4000, and multiples thereof, common instead of leap. While this modification has often been proposed since, it has never been officially adopted. On time scales of thousands of years, the Gregorian calendar falls behind the astronomical seasons because the slowing down of the Earth's rotation makes each day slightly longer over time, see tidal acceleration and leap second, while the year maintains a more uniform duration. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Calendar seasonal error. This image shows the difference between the Gregorian calendar and the astronomical seasons. The y-axis is the date in June and the x-axis is Gregorian calendar years. Each point is the date and time of the June solstice in that particular year. The error shifts by about a quarter of a day per year. Centurial years are ordinary years, unless they are divisible by 400, in which case they are leap years. This causes a correction in the years 1700, 1800, 1900, 2100, 2200, and 2300. 
For instance, these corrections caused the 23rd of December 1903 to be the latest December solstice and the 20th of December 2096 to be the earliest solstice, about 2.35 days of variation compared with the seasonal event. Topic proposed reforms The following are proposed reforms of the Gregorian calendar, Holocene calendar International Fixed Calendar also called the International Perpetual Calendar World Calendar World Season Calendar Leap Week Calendars Pax Calendar Symmetry 454 Hank Henry Permanent Calendar Topic See also Calendar New Style Act 1750 Calendar Reform Conversion between Julian and Gregorian Calendars Doomsday Rule French Revolutionary Calendar Hebrew Calendar Islamic Calendar Inter Visimas in English, Wikisource Julian Day History of Calendars List of Adoption Dates of the Gregorian Calendar Per Country List of Calendars Old Calendarists Greek Old Calendarists Revised Julian Calendar Milan Kovic Used in Eastern Orthodoxy Precursors of the Gregorian Reform Johannes de Sacrobosco, de Anni Ration On Reckoning the Years, c. 1235 Roger Bacon, Opus Magis Greater Work, c. 1267 Topic Notes Topic Citations Topic References Barsome, Ignatius A. 2003. The Scattered Pearls. Piscataway, Georgius Press. Blackburn, B. and Holford Strevens, L. 1999. The Oxford Companion to the Year. Oxford University Press. ISBN 0-19-214231-3. Blackburn, B. and Holford Strevens, L. 2003. The Oxford Companion to the Year, An Exploration of Calendar Customs and Time Reckoning, Oxford University Press. Blegen, Carl W. N. D. An Odd Christmas. Posted with an introduction by Natalia vogaikov brogan on 25 December 2013. From the Archivist's Notebook retrieved 1 April 2018. Burkowski, K. M., 1991. The Tropical Calendar and Solar Year, J. Royal Astronomical Society, of Canada 85, 3, 121 130. Carabias Torres, A. M., 2012. Salamanca y la Medida del Tiempo. Salamanca, Ediciones Universidad de Salamanca. Coyne, G. V., Hoskin, M. A., Peterson, O. E. Dees, 1983. Gregorian Reform of the Calendar, Proceedings of the Vatican Conference to Commemorate its 400th Anniversary, 1582-1982. Vatican City, Pontifical Academy of Sciences, Vatican Observatory Pontificia Academia Scientarum, Specula Vaticana. Duncan, D. E. Calendar, Humanity's Epic Struggle to Determine a True and Accurate Year. HarperCollins. ISBN 9780380793242 Gregory the 13th 2002 Gravissimas subscription required W Spencer and RT Crowley Trans International Organization for Standardization Mias J and Savoy D 1992 The History of the Tropical Year Journal of the British Astronomical Association, 102, 1, 40 to 42. Morrison, L. V. and Stevenson, F. R. 2004. Historical values of the Earth's clock error delta t and the calculation of eclipses. Journal for the History of Astronomy, Vol. 35, Part 3, Number 120, pp. 327 to 336. Moyer, Gordon. May 1982. The Gregorian Calendar. Scientific American, pp. 144-152. Moyer, Gordon Aloysius Lilius and the Compendium Novi Rationis Restituendi Calendarium. In Coyne, Hoskin, Peterson pp. 171-188. Patty, T. S. An Unexpected Effect of the Change in Calendar in 1752. British Library Journal. Peterson, O. 1983. The Ecclesiastical Calendar and the Life of the Church. In Coyne, Hoskin, Peterson, eds. Gregorian Reform of the Calendar: Proceedings of the Vatican Conference to Commemorate its 400th Anniversary. Vatican City, Pontifical Academy of Sciences, Speculo Vaticano, pp. 17 to 74. Richards, E. G. 1998. Mapping Time, The Calendar and Its History. Oxford U Press. Richards, E. G. 2013. Calendars. 
In S. E. Urban and P. K. Seidelman, eds. Explanatory Supplement to the Astronomical Almanac, pp. 585 to 624. Mill Valley, C. A. University Science Books. ISBN 978-1-891389-85-6 Seidelman, P. K. Ed. 1992. Explanatory Supplement to the Astronomical Almanac. Sausalito, California, University Science Books. Swerdlau, N. M. The Length of the Year in the Original Proposal for the Gregorian Calendar. Journal for the History of Astronomy Vol. 17, No. 49, pp. 109–118. Walker, G. W. Easter Intervals. Popular Astronomy June 1945, Vol. 53, pp. 162–178, 218–232. Zigalar, A. The Papal Bull of 1582 Promulgating a Reform of the Calendar. In Coyne, Hoskin, Peterson eds, Gregorian Reform of the Calendar, Proceedings of the Vatican Conference to Commemorate its 400th Anniversary. Vatican City, Pontifical Academy of Sciences, Specolo Vaticano, pp. 201–239. <laughs> External links Gregorian Calendar on In Our Time at the BBC Calendar converter Intergravissimas Latin and French plus English History of Gregorian calendar The perpetual calendar Gregorian calendar adoption dates for many countries World records for mentally calculating the day of the week in the Gregorian calendar The calendar FAQ frequently asked questions about calendars Today's date Gregorian in over 400 more or less obscure foreign languages